the worship comes back. Good morning again, everyone. We would just like to add an additional announcement. Next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in the cafeteria, we'll be having a prayer workshop hosted by our own minister, Dawn Duggins. It will, did I have that correct, uh, Sister Me, 10.30 cafeteria? And it's for our young people. We just wanted to make sure everyone got the word and was invited. Perfect. I see a lot of young people here today. I, I number myself among them, but I won't get into that. But I expect to see our young people there next Sunday, 1030 in the cafeteria. Amen? Amen.
of numbers, there is no talk about God. Just how many numbers, how many folks have subscribed to it? Netflix, how many folks are signed up for it and all of our streaming services? There is no mention of the intrinsic value, the morality. At election time, the politicians get hired out of religion. You see them in churches everywhere. Yeah. Around the time of election time, they're so saved and sanctified and yeah. filled with the Holy Ghost. But after they get your votes, you don't see them anymore. But then they also flirt with big businesses that won't give our churches a dime. They cater to different groups and they somehow adapt their message to different audiences. In fact, there was one politician who said one thing in Westville and something else in a different part of Philly. What on earth is Jesus going to do with two or three people? When we are addicted to masses, when we're addicted to large numbers, what is Jesus going to do with two or three people? Where did Jesus get his numbers from? Why two or three? That's all it takes. Because his presence alone yeah. makes all of the difference. Wherever Jesus is, his presence will yeah. make all of the difference. Wherever Jesus is, his presence is enough to change the number. Yeah. Yeah. You can go into somebody's house and you can tell whether or not Jesus lives there. You can tell by the talk, by the conduct. You can tell whether Jesus abides in this place. Come on. Come on. The purpose is different when we put Jesus into the number. When Jesus is the center, you have a yardstick for setting your agenda, for measuring your agenda. And then finally, when Jesus is in, while the power is different, and Jesus leads us straight to the source of power made available through the Holy Spirit. Similarly, when God is with you, numbers don't really matter. Gather together necessarily indicates on one accord. Prayer ought not be selfish. We're not intended just to pray for our own needs thinking of no one else and nothing else. We're meant to pray as members of a fellowship, as members of the family of God in agreement, mindful of the fact that God's divine yes. order is not arranged for us individually, but for the whole family and the fellowship as a whole. Often, if our prayers are answered, then the prayers of someone else might be frustrated or disappointed. So many times, our prayers for our success would necessarily mean somebody else's failure. When prayer is unselfish, it is always answered. We must remember the basic law of prayer. That law is that in prayer, we receive not the answer that we desire, but the answer which God in, in God's infinite wisdom knows to be best. Amen. Think about that now for a minute. There are some prayers I'm glad God did not answer. Yes. For me. Me, too. Yeah. me too. Things that I thought at the time were best. I, I was so certain of. I was so sure of, I so desperately wanted it. God did not bring. And I know we shout a lot off open doors. And I know we shout a lot off doors that God has opened that no man can close. But sometimes we ought to shout and thank God for some closed doors. Yes, yes. Sometimes we ought to shout and thank God that things did not work out the way that they wanted them to. Thank God that the relationship that I wanted, that I talked about, for me didn't work out. Thank God that the job that I thought that I wanted didn't come through. When God answers some prayers and not some others, you are thank you. I'm glad that some things did not go the way that I hoped. I'm glad that some things did not go the way 
circumcised, most of our prayers are for escape. We want to be spared or saved from some trial, some sorrow, some disappointment, some painful and or difficult situation. God's answer is not always escape, but a victory. That's right. God does not always give us escape from our situations, but he strengthens us to endure what we could not withstand without him. He enables us to face that what we thought was beyond our human ability. There are things, there are things that we have gone through that have broken other people, and yet we're still standing. There are things that we've gone
to show. Yeah. Some folk just came because they had nothing else to do. But when two or three gather in his name, when two or three said, I come for the singular purpose of worshiping him and giving him glory. Glory. How much now that the chest does not say he'll give them their way? Come on. Some people think that simply because they pray that God will give them everything yeah. they want. And then they got and then they got the nerve to get mad when he doesn't. God is not a genie. You can't just make a wish or rub it and think that God is gonna do what you want him to do. But the text says he'll be in their midst. I believe that's good news for somebody this one. He'll be in their midst for inspection. His eyes are like a flame of fire for protection. He'll be in their midst for direction. I want God to be in my midst. Because there are some dark that are coming my way. But if God is in my midst, then no weapons formed against me shall I want God to be in my midst so I can have direction for the steps of a good man all by he is the searcher of our hearts he is the great revealer he visits all of his churches he knows their practice their state of being and their constitution as a commanding officer he visits his soldiers to see if they're standing at their post he visits to make sure his soldiers are on guard and their own duty to check on their discipline to see if their arms are in good condition Jesus is here to check us out no member, no character, no practice, no thought, no word, no wish, no feeling escapes the notice of Jesus. He is an all seer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The presence of Christ in his church is the bond of his union, wow. the soul of his worship, and the power of his ministry. The church does not depend on members. On. Two or three met with Christ are not merely added, but they're multiplied and they multiply each other's faith. By the power of he who is in their midst, if one can chase one's out, two can put 10,000 yeah. to run. Don't be a, 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 a child of God by yourself trying to live your life alone. For God likened the church to a flock of sheep. There is strength in numbers. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their neighbors. When Jesus called the 70, he sent them out by two. The work is much more productive when we work together in numbers. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe unto them when he falls. For he does not have anybody to help him up. You remember a while ago uh, 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 that there was a popular TV commercial that said, I'm falling, I'm falling, and I can't. I can't That's what happens when you're by yourself. Yeah. There's nobody to get you back up and put you back on your feet when you go to the gym and the weights are too heavy. You need somebody who can spot you, who can help you to carry the weight. And sometimes, child of God, you need somebody else who can plug what you want, who can strengthen you, who can encourage your heart, who can tell you you're going to make it by the grace of God. Every now and then, you need somebody who you can partner up with, who you can pair up with. And that's why we say turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor because you have to encourage you got to minister to somebody. You got to share a word with somebody. Bow down here and tell them lift up your head. Yeah. Oh, God. The people of God need each other. People yes. make the terrible mistake of isolating themselves from the church and then they fall. 
And then if the two lie together, then they have equal power. Can one be one alone? The secret to us staying on fire for God is for us to be surrounded by people and the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. There is no way that we can make it by ourselves. Mm. Mm. We need the strength yes, of each other. Yeah. Someone who can simply be an encouraging voice. Yeah. Who can tell us, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Help is on the way. Yes. Help. And now watch this. You don't just need some bodies around you. Come on. You need some folks who are filled with and full of the power of God. Yeah. So that when two or three gather in his name, Sister Cindy, mm -hmm. you remember when it was just a few of us yeah. on Gerard Avenue yeah. gathered in his name. Yeah. But we were shouting and having good church because we were there for the singular purpose to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord. We were there to encourage and strengthen our prayer. If we are to make it two to three, nimble and moving forward in faith, it don't take a whole lot of folk. Come on. To get God's work done. I know that's right. I know. Gave you the quota already. Where there are two or three yeah. gathered. Yeah. Where there are two or three folks who have the same mindset. Yeah. Two or three people who are unified on one of them. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know that's right. Preachers say that there is one vision. Anything more than one vision, mm. it becomes division. Yes. And, and a house divided against itself will not stand. Will not stand. Will not stand. That's right. And then he went a step further and said that the Lord, he he calls a pastor and a preacher. And, and he places him as the head of the church. And that anything that has more than one head is a monster that ought to be killed. Yes. Where there is singularity of purpose and vision, that's when the people of God can do a great work for the Lord. Shall we say? Amen. Bless God. The text says, and I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which are in heaven. Beloved of God, if you're here this morning, if you're believing God for something, let us touch and agree with singularity of heart and of purpose. And I believe that this is a good message because you need to be around folks who have the right mindset, who have the right attitude and perspective. When we are seeing 14 year olds being slaughtered and killed, 13 year olds robbing and stealing, it's because they, yes there are two or three, but they're not gathered in his name. Saints of God, that we've got to come together touching and agree with singularity of purpose and heart. If you want to see a church that's on fire for God, 
link up with me. I've got to then link up with Sister Joyce. She's got to link up with somebody else. Everybody has to be united together on the same page. When you gather in this house, you gather in his name. And if you did not come in his name,
come on, brother. If you're here this morning and you are struggling with the decision, then why don't you come this morning? Why don't you come? Because we want to get that music in. Oh, my God. 
brother. We're going home, but sometimes it's not a shock, but sometimes it's God who is moving on the altar of your heart. Yes, 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 yes. But if God has been good to you, if he's blessed you, then I don't have to pump you up. The choir don't have to sing you up. But you ought to say, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, I'm going to bless the old Lord. Somebody give the Lord praise in this place. Somebody give the glory all over the sanctuary. Lift up the highest. Lift up the highest praise. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Start thinking. Think of the biggest thing that you're believing God for. 
and believe and trust him that it's going to happen. Thank God for these that have come. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, for your word all ways it makes us better. Thank, thank you, God, for this service. Thank you for the songs of Zion and the prayers of the faith. Thank you for our young people. Thank you, God, for where you're taking us to. Thank you for the fellowship of the gathered. Thank you that, God, you have assigned our hands to this work. That you have called us, God, not to look back, not to be discouraged, but to gather in your name, to work in your name, to serve in your name, to worship in your name, and God, to do all the things that you have commanded us to do. God, I pray now that you would tear down strongholds. I pray that, God, that you would just even now, that you would just spell the spirit of discouragement. I come against every lying tongue this morning. I come against every negative word that says I can't, that says we can't, that says that we won't. But we will believe that the word and the promises of God are yes and amen. And so, God, we're going to stand boldly proclaiming your word, doing your work, and we're going to witness to Jesus. Because, God, somebody needs to be reminded to the utmost. Jesus says, even if he has to reach down to the guttermost, Lord, don't catch us with our work on them. But, God, please allow us individually and collectively to think, how can we serve you better? How can we love you better? How can we be better Christians for you? Better sons and daughters. Make us worthy yes. of being called your children. And God, I pray now, even for this church, that as we move forward in faith, that God, even now, you would root out the spirit of scarcity and pettiness and caginess that says we can't afford it. And that says that with God we can do all things. But fail. God, I pray that you would give us big vision. And that God, you would make the for your vision. That God, you said that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. And God, we know that you will provide the means to fund your vision. And that God, for this work that you've called us to, as daunting of a task as it may be, that God, you have strengthened us for this work. Help us to minister to men and women, to children, boys and girls, to tell them about your saving grace. God, I pray this morning that you would light a fire under your people. I pray that God, you would make them so uncomfortable until they stand up and do what it is that you command us to do. Don't allow us to become stagnant and complacent. Don't allow us to rest on our walls. But God calls us to ask the question, what more can we do for you? Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. For it's in the powerful precious name of Jesus. The only name that matters. The only name that saves us. The only name that heals us. The only name that makes us better. For in that name that we gather and that we declare victory. Yes. The powerful name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.